Good afternoon and welcome to today's energy seminar. Today I'm delighted and uh, thrilled actually to have the brand new uh, director of the Pre-Court Institute for Energy, Ishwe, join us. I have to say from my point of view and everybody else's, he's really hit the ground running uh, the last uh, few months. I was going to say that he is a man who needs no introduction, but I do feel he does because uh, he is one of these unique people who actually has been successful in four uh, parallel careers. So let me list them, at least from my perspective. He's been a top researcher in nanotechnology with a focus on the energy sector, including physics, chemistry, and a little bit of biology, uh, and has uh, many hundreds, hundreds of publications, which may be uh, a all-time record for a speaker at the energy seminar. He's actually been willing to do this seminar for us a few times, for me a few times before, which has been, he's been one of the most popular speakers in that regard on the research side. He's also gotten into research management and uh, was, uh, uh, is a professor of photonics at uh, the SLAC National Accelerator Laboratory, uh, as well as uh, the uh, very innovative, uh, more recent uh, job as co-director of the Storage uh, X initiative, which started in 2019. He's also a kind of innovation entrepreneur in terms of reaching out to the business and uh, government communities to accelerate things. And in fact, was the, I, I think, founding co-director of the Bay Area Photo, uh, Photovoltaic Consortium from 2011 to 2018. And uh, finally, he's an entrepreneur, not just, uh, actually, we're finding within the context of energy innovation at Stand, uh, Stanford writ large, but actually has taken ideas with uh, former students uh, from the labs uh, into startups. So I think there's at least four startups that he's been uh, directly involved in. So without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to each way, uh, the brand new or almost brand new uh, director of the Precord Institute for Energy, which is our sponsor, a uh, benefactor in many ways, but also um, a very singular uh, institution that uh, many other institutions are trying to copy now, but he's uh, quick enough to keep us ahead of the game, and he'll give us a talk on his vision for the future of the Precord Institute for Energy. E, take it away. He's also my neighbor. I left that out, which is another fun, uh, fun fact from my personal point of view. <laughs> he's a good neighbor. <laughs> Thank you so much, John, for your uh, introduction and invitation. Well, you know, I'm a three month and uh, three and a half month old director <laughs> uh, for the Pre-Core Institute, quite a bit of learning. Um, today, uh, it's uh, my pleasure to share with you some of the thoughts on the future of pre you know, vision plan for the next decade. Um, first of all, before I even start, I really like to acknowledge many, many people. Uh, when I transitioned into this new role and uh, coming to talk to me and really educate me about our pre core Institute, you know, faculties, members, staff, and I, I really appreciate the previous directors particularly. Um, so looking at the vision of pre core Institute, this is the vision um, Alun and Sally uh, when they were director already set up, I, uh, I look at this vision, I say, we don't need to change. It's the same vision. It's very exciting, sustainable, affordable, and secure energy for all. So very simple, very clear message, very high impact. Um, well, looking at the status of pre core Institute, um, I myself do my own <laughs> evaluation as well, looking at what we have at the whole Stanford Energy community. Well, thanks to uh, the previous directors, Arun, Sally, and Lynn, and also uh, the whole Stanford Energy community uh, from faculty, students, staff, and alumni, and our advisory council members, Preco is a world leading institute in energy. So I'm inheriting this institute proudly already in a, such a great shape. So this is a, a, a really, really good platform for us to explore to the next uh, level. Uh, let's look at what's the opportunity in front of us for energy in the coming decades. This is probably the, uh, one of the most exciting times for energy 
And uh, U.S. is back to uh, Paris Accord, uh, the Biden administration's energy policy very aggressively towards uh, clean energy. 25% of Fortune 500 company have committed to uh, climate goals. And this percentage is rising very fast. It will not be surprising in a year or two, most of the Fortune 500 company might already committed to the climate goals. And at Stanford right here, we are starting a new school uh, focused on climate and sustainability. These really three things I see presenting to the whole Stanford energy community uh, uh, working on clean energy. So the question is, how do we respond to these great opportunities? And I'm fortunate to uh, have our colleagues right here. Uh, I have been talking to and uh, having a great advice for many of you, I really appreciate. And also from alumni or uh, otherwise with council members as well. Well, let's look into what do we have. The, the research and edu educational program and uh, pre core Institute in the whole Stanford energy community is, uh, you know, this, this whole list of programs right here. I will not go into the details of that. That will take a long time to uh, share with you what's going on in each of these uh, center and initiative. But I would like to reformulate what we have and plan for the future and the language. Maybe it's easier for you to understand and for me to understand what we have. So here is interwoven fabric type of uh, configuration I want to share with you to organize the thoughts about Stanford energy research. And the vertical columns right here is, they are the initiatives we already have, a pretty exciting one on uh, technology. For example, bits and watts. Uh, this is initiative started several years ago by Arun and Sally. Um, this is uh, try to tackle the issue of uh, decarbonizing the electrical grid. We know if you look at the carbon footprint of, of each sectors, electrical grid and also transportation stand out as two most outstanding one. Each contribute to roughly about a third of the CO2 emission, depending of course in the countries you are looking at. In uh, 2019, as John mentioned, uh, I serve as co-director with uh, Will Chu to start energy storage uh, initiative called Storage X. Uh, most of the research program is on batteries. Of course, it's not limited to the batteries, you know, thermal storage, pump hydro, all the storage mechanisms we will consider. With the uh, storage coming in, this helped decarbonizing the transportation area as well as in synergy with uh, bits and watts to help decarbonizing the grid. So these are the two very important initiatives already started uh, several years ago. And in this whole energy landscape of research, natural gas initiative is also a very important one. Natural gas, how do you utilize natural gas, reduce the carbon footprint to doing the uh, uh, you know, uh, carbon conversion storage and so on. And uh, natural gas is a very important part of energy system. And particularly, you know, natural gas as uh, one way of a long duration storage prepare for the seasonal variation is an important part of the ecosystem. And in the very fundamental research part of catalysis, a SunCat center uh, is a very important one. Uh, many energy transformation process involving a catalytic process. This as a fundamental uh, uh, center, it's important part of a Stanford energy system, as well as uh, new materials, the SIMES, the Stanford Institute for Materials and Energy Research is also important part of that. So with these vertical columns, so what's next down the road? we need to consider. And carbon removal initiative is a new one under planning. Uh, indeed, before I took a director job, uh, uh, Sally Alun and uh, Chris Field and the Woods Institute, 
uh, they have been uh, planning about this already. So I'm very supportive of that. This is a very important initiative. How do you do carbon capture, conversion, storage, and that is engineering solution or the natural solution to this active planning right now and, uh, and starting this initiative. Next one is the hydrogen initiative. The greenhouse gas free hydrogen is also very important for decarbonizing the uh, industry. I'll go into a little bit more detail in the next few slides. So these are the one under consideration. And in the cross cutting areas, also very important is how do we think about energy finance, the sustainable finance, this uh, sustainable finance initiative already existing inside Preco Institute. And the policy is very important component as well to support the whole energy system uh, to have the right policy in place is very important. This involving, you know, Hoover Institute, involving uh, uh, law school and uh, business school. This is an uh, uh, important part of the uh, equation. Uh, education, we want to engage more of education at the Preco Institute. It is already explore energy as a very exciting program, very successful program uh, to perform the education function. Uh, external communication, what do we do right here? We need to have uh, com uh, external communication strategy to let outside world know about us to form partnership. And, and cross-cutting, this is a new one, very exciting. It's a planning for the future energy system. It's highly complex system, how, you know, how much solar we need, how much wind we need, how much storage we need, and the uh, you know, charging station and couple with the climate change and environmental justice, how do we understand this? And uh, this is the initiative I'm excited about planning and, and to start is using big data, using machine learning to plan for the future energy system. Um, and the technology translation is important part of it to de decarbonize the, uh, the whole economy. And we need new technology and the exciting things we work on at Stanford, how do we translate that into industry? And, and there will be a, quite a bit of synergy down the road with the new school planning and how do we do this together? Um, and this whole, all these energy ideas, this uh, social and human behavior part, this uh, social justice, environmental justice consider consideration, we need to put in more and more to uh, engage broadly the whole society into this process to decarbonize the whole economy. And global engagement, including you know, with China, with India, with Europe, with uh, Africa, with the whole world, this is also important part of the uh, Stanford energy uh, uh, ecosystem that continue to be important. So with this interwoven fabric of the energy ecosystem. Uh, let me also mention in the Preco Institute has been uh, actively engaged uh, with all the schools. The, uh, the Institute is set up in a way is a cross cutting all the school, certainly very strong engagement already in, with engineering and also strong engagement with Earth Energy Environmental School and with the humanities and science as well. Uh, with more and more uh, communication, I'm hoping to engage your business and law school even more. We have a little bit with uh, medicine. This is, uh, I would hope to have more dialogue. How do we engage uh, medicine education more? With Hoover, very strong engagement. Now I also see great opportunity, the engagement with Slack, particularly Stanford Slack partnership with DOE. So these uh, engagement with Slack is very important as well. And the, the, the biggest opportunity for uh, Preco Institute is the new school. Uh, focus on climate and sustainability. It becomes very clear. Preco needs to be part of new school to help new school building up the program. In the same time, Preco uh, Institute can grow as well. So yet at the same time, maintaining the cross-cutting function with the other 
a new school, I will welcome our, our faculties and, and staff uh, providing certainly feedback right during uh, the next uh, several years and uh, how I can do the uh, better the job of a director position to uh, continuous perform this cross cutting function yet focusing on the new school building as well. So let me give you the examples of this uh, new initiative. Uh, I have been thinking about with feedback from uh, uh, many faculties and from our pre core fellows already. Uh, one is on the energy climate AI. This is a, a, a short uh, description on this initiative. This page basically involving the whole energy system analysis design and integration, integrating the thinking of a climate pattern disaster warning overlay with energy system and map out the CO2 footprint of the entire supply chain and uh, thinking about decarbonizing the grid transportation and also integrate the thinking of uh, environmental and social justice overlay with the whole energy system. This is extremely exciting. Basically coupling energy um, and uh, climate and uh, environmental social justice together into the whole system uh, to plan for the future, requiring big data, machine learning to come in to study this complex network. Um, indeed, we just uh, started uh, a new seed funding mechanism called Precore Pioneering Project. And the first quarter we released the pro proposal call. We just finished selecting the project and we'll be announcing very soon in about a week also we'll be announcing the winners. This is in the areas of energy, climate AI and for the system integration. We have uh, uh, two very exciting projects identified. Uh, you will see the announcement uh, hopefully next week. The second initiative is carbon removal uh, from carbon capture conversion the vision is, you know, to store it. Right? The vision is to create science-based opportunity and solution for gigaton scale of negative emission. And uh, it's very likely, you know, based on solar and wind itself, without the, you know, fossil energy like uh, natural gas environment decarbonizing uh, the whole grid, decarbonizing the all the energy areas will be tough. We still need the fossil fuel for a long time. Then we need strategies to uh, capture the CO2 to convert to and also to store. So this will be an important part of the energy ecosystem to reach a net zero. And we need negative emission, uh, a solution coming in to reach the, you know, for the whole energy system to be net zero. This is under planning. These are the faculties involved. Uh, Sarah is the managing director to help really uh, planning for, for these uh, exciting uh, new initiative. A, a new one coming is the hydrogen. And, and hydrogen with a low greenhouse gas uh, uh, hydrogen, you know, or greenhouse gas free hydrogen will be very important for uh, uh, decarbonizing certain industry, for example, steel making, heavy duty transportation, um, and the heating, uh, long duration storage, and, and, and there's a multiple important application areas could require hydrogen once the hydrogen cost is low enough. So the research thrust in Stanford can include how do you generate low cost hydrogen uh, with a, a greenhouse gas uh, a free uh, hydrogen. And how do you do hydrogen storage, transportation and utilization? Uh, we now have a team of uh, faculty and staff to help planning for this initiate, initiative. Uh, Shaolin Zhen and Fritz Prince agreed to be the faculty co-director to plan for the hydrogen initiative. Uh, Tom Harmiro, Jim, uh, Jimmy Chen, and uh, Naomi uh, Bonis, they are involved actively in planning for this. We hope to be able to launch this initiative very soon. This is picking up a lot of momentum. Actually, tomorrow we are having this uh, hydrogen heavy duty uh, workshop and, and engaging industry 
to really uh, is serving for the purpose or planning of this initiative. Uh, stay tuned, this is coming uh, fast to, uh, you know, to, to be launched hopefully sometime this year. So I want to also want to share with you the thoughts of potential Pre-Core Institute initiative. I, I just described, just introduced to you the three in the top, energy, climate, AI, carbon removal, hydrogen. Some of the topics now under discussion, I want to share with you. One is on reinventing the plastics. We know we consume a lot of plastics and um, it's not in a sustainable way. So it requires creative thinking, really reinvent the plastics uh, with sustainability in mind. Now there's a team of faculty, about 10 also, active involving and coming up ideas to really generate a plastic. How do you, from the, uh, uh, the polymer chemistry to processing and uh, make it sustainable. So this is area I'm excited about and many faculty uh, members are excited about. The second one is on energy efficient computing with more and more computational power coming in, particularly with AI and uh, computing consume more and more energy. And how do we do efficient computing becomes important, consume less energy and at the same time computing speed can become faster, becomes more efficient. Uh, uh, that uh, also facilitate our big data AI for energy initiative as well. So System X uh, with Philip Wong and uh, the, uh, the faculty members associated with System X, we are planning about this. Also this could engage, engage Slack as well. The next one, uh, uh, just starting, uh, I have been thinking and also chatting with uh, a few faculties is on sustainable uh, manufacturing. And, and this is important, see less CO2 footprint and also uh, saving the materials. What is a lot of crea creative ideas needed to uh, think about sustainable manufacturing. Going down to the list, uh, uh, this is very initial uh, uh, stage of thinking is zero emission aviation. We know for transportation, for uh, personal cars, it looks like it's a lithium ion batteries already, you know, that, that will change the whole passenger cars. And moving to bus and heavy duty might require hydrogen, might, might require fuel cells. So this is open. And then if you go into the airplane, going to aviation and uh, 30 years, you look down the next three decades, its CO2 footprint will become in percentage wise will go up. How do you decarbonize aviation? This is very challenging. And zero emission aviation can, can be coming aggressively. And uh, you are going to see it in the airplane uh, industry, you know, all electrified airplane is needed. Uh, at Stanford, we need to think about the uh, decarbonization in this area, what we do in these areas. And, and going down to the list, energy climate policy solution, environmental justice, social behavior, these are coming. I'm still in the learning process. How are we going to, to do this? And also recently talking to the business school, well, carbon neutral, net zero, net zero, you know, by 2050, the whole economy, the world economy is decarbonized. What does this mean for business school? And uh, do we do business as usual? I, I, I guess it's not, you know, this present big challenges and also opportunities for, for new type of business. So we need to put our head together from, you know, energy technology, science and technology engineering together with uh, business economics to, to really look, look into this new opportunity. What's really coming is unknown. You know, we can see some of the things, for example, the whole supply chain needs to, to be decarbonized. You know, all the business, when you do, you know, between different company, you need to really look into CO2 footprint. What does this mean to the business opportunities? So we need to look into that more. Uh, stay tuned, this is uh, uh, coming. We need uh, uh, more involvement of uh, business school faculty uh, in this process. 
so I also like to mention more about uh, labs to market technology translation. And with the uh, uh, new school on climate and sustainability, you know, this uh, sustainability accelerator and the planning for technology translation for also policy solution for, for translation. And this offer new type of funding vehicles, right, to taking the solution generated in the labs, uh, 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 going to the next level, de risk and translate into the industry become the uh, realistic solution. There's a huge opportunities right there. Experience here in the Stanford Energy Ecosystem, Tomcat you know, Innovation Transfer Program and Stanford's Climate Venture course. Uh, these provide some of the foundation to couple with the uh, new school's uh, sustainability accelerator. I bet we could do more with a pre-course, a CFAM mechanism, a lot of great ideas get funded to feed into the uh, accelerator to get to the next level. Uh, these, uh, I, I see uh, great opportunities right there. Just as an example, so what, what type of acceleration are we talking about from the technology side? Well, th this is my understanding based on the startup company I, I founded or co-founded in the uh, last uh, you know, 12, 13 years, going from lab to market, we are seeing it will experience from milligram of materials, usually in the lab, to about a gram. You need to go up to kilogram, eventually get up to the, in the order of million tons easily, you need to consider in the marketplace. And uh, the areas of the device, we work on the lab, typically centimeter square, maybe a little bit bigger. Then you need to go to meter square, to a thousand meter square and then to a billion meter square type of range. So the device from lab prototype need to go through a commercial prototype to manufacturable product. So this whole process, the orders of magnitude you see from lab to market, oftentimes get you about 13 to 15 orders of magnitude. How do we do that? It's actually a very, very challenging problem. And um, with the technology translation, we can do more at Stanford. And this is the value proposition. I see translation type of research. If you look at a R&D uh, program and the energy startup company, the first three to four years nearly has no difference from university research. Oftentimes it's the same. And, but the cost is about three times higher in the company then why don't you do it in university with the proper guidance of what industry is needed? And the sweet spot right here is the gram, ki kilogram scale, meter square, right? commercial prototype. This type of translation research, we hope to be able to do more at Stanford in the new school or accelerator. This will help uh, causing the value of the depth and uh, made the uh, translation into industry to the much larger scale, a lot more successful. That's the value I've been seeing. So with the new school building up, uh, Preco in the new school is uh, a really close relationship. Preco can be part of new school. Yes, they're maintain the, maintaining the whole university cross-cutting function. Uh, Preco can have new school you bring in resources, building up the talent, building up the culture, these, these three things are very important. Well, in the past about close to 20 years now, since GSAP time, translate and becoming a pre core institute. And, and pre core has known uh, figuring out the mechanism, very powerful, very strong structure to build out the program. And looking at different initiatives, and the uh, pre core and the whole Stanford energy ecosystem, the faculty co-director pairing with a managing director, you know, very high quality managing director. This has been very, very powerful. I work uh, with our managing directors who closely have seen the quality of people we have. Certainly the quality of faculty co-director, this has been very exciting, building up the initi initiative very fast. This will be the mechanism um, 
uh, Preco Institute could help building up the new school. And look, looking down the, the road, the growth opportunity for Preco is uh, multiple areas of the growth. Uh, Preco has been very success, successful in partnership with energy company and their supplier. This will continue to be a very exciting growth areas. We know we have a, a strategic energy alliance, ExxonMobil, Bank of America, Total and Shell. And uh, we continue to grow this partnership with energy company and their suppliers. Our initiative, Bits and Watts, Storage X, you know, uh, and uh, using the Stanford Energy Corporate Affiliate SACA mechanism, we are involving uh, 24 companies and uh, they provide quite a bit of support to our initiative. And this number is grows bigger right now. I still need to update the slides. So these will continue to grow as uh, areas number one. The second one is the companies, Fortune 500 companies and many high-tech companies, they are not necessarily doing energy, but they commit the uh, zero emission goal by certain time. Uh, you have seen the Amazon's climate pledge, 53 companies joining Amazon and uh, Microsoft, uh, Google has their climate goal, Apple announced the climate goals, many companies announced in the high tech area uh, announcing the climate goals. And Preco Institute, we are planning this uh, zero emission accelerator to help those companies to reach their climate goal which zero emission these they set up the goal by certain time and our data big data energy cli climate ai co2 mapping the sub supply chain how to get a scope three for example environmental justice and so on sustainable packaging materials roadmap for the carbon goal zero emission education for the company all this program we are designing right now try to engage this company opening up a uh, a huge opportunity of partnership to much broader uh, range for pre-call with the uh, enterprise. So we are working hard on this. Uh, 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 hopefully we'll, we'll be able to announce uh, you know, some of this partnership very soon. Um, the third area of the growth is the partnership with Slack to work with the Department of Energy. And Slack as a DOE national lab and all for its unique uh, capability in a big facility. Stanford already has a very uh, strong energy research program, faculties, staff, and students. We could work with Slack closely. For example, we are thinking about National Energy Translation Consortium. Uh, this white paper indeed we submitted to DOE uh, during the uh, transition period in, uh, in November. And uh, we hope to be able to communicate with the DOE about this idea and Silicon Valley right here. We stand for Slack partnerships to set up a energy translation consortium making a lot of sense and, and closely linked with that. And uh, I have been talking with Slack director Xi Chang Kao and also Steve Aglash as the uh, uh, energy division director on the potentially John pre-call and Slack centers on four of these centers. There's already very uh, a strong um, um, of a critical mass of faculty right here at Stanford coupling with Slack on batteries on carbon removal, smart grid and hydrogen. We are now thinking about how to structure uh, this relationship to build up the joint centers so to work with the Department of Energy, coupling the, uh, uh, the strength of private school, the strength of a DOE lab and the strength of uh, the Department of Energy to build up this uh, joint center, uh, you know, uh, sitting in the Silicon Valley. So this will be very, very exciting opportunity. The fourth area is with uh, our local government, uh, California Energy Commission's uh, Electrical electric program investment charge. This is called APID. So APID has been funding research in the areas really aligned with what Preco has been doing. Um, so this opportunity for us at Stanford right here to 
find out the opportunity to work with uh, a state government uh, to you know have the win-win situation we have very strong research can also help the state government and their program to decarbonize particularly in the electricity uh, uh, sectors you look at all these program solic solicitations it actually fits very nicely with, with uh, what we have so building the uh, relationship with uh, a state government is, uh, I, I see this great opportunity. Our faculty listening and students and staff, right, particularly our faculties right here, uh, uh, if you see how we can build out the partnership with uh, uh, state government, please let me know, get in touch with me. I will be happy to talk to you and, and see how we uh, do this together. So speaking of building up all this exciting research program, let me share with you what my personal story the partnership between Preco Institute, what a private school can offer, and in coupling with Department of Energy, hopefully a coupling down the road with the state government, this could be very, very powerful mechanism for us to build up the exciting program and to help the uh, decarbonization fast. I joined the Stanford faculty in 2005 uh, with the startup funding to jumpstart my battery research program. Uh, Global Climate Energy Project uh, 2006 providing me the first funding, uh, my, <laughs> the funding I ever got on the battery research, the first one. And to work on the high energy density battery, particularly my silicon anode research. You now, very early on, that was the time it was very hard to obtain government funding. Indeed, there's not much government funding uh, uh, to fund battery research at, at that time, but the internal center at Stanford funded my research. That kept me going. And uh, Preco Institute 2010 provided me a C fund and together with uh, Professor Jonan Bao, 200K to see the research, to put in faculty to work on batteries. This is very important, Stefan, indeed lead to our now a, more than a decade long collaboration on the batteries uh, and coming out a lot of creative idea on the battery research. In uh, 2010, uh, that was the first fund I was able to get from Department of Energy to uh, work on uh, 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 batteries. Um, and we we're, we're joining the fact in 2012 and now you can see we slowly build up the critical mass. This is very important event. We are coming in, uh, build up the his battery research program really fast together with Jernan and other faculties. Now we are, we are start to see some critical mass and we have this uh, battery hub J Caesar, you know, Slack uh, through Slack. We join in as a, a partner to uh, work on this uh, battery hub. Uh, when I joined the Stanford faculty, that was the time uh, uh, there's no people working on the battery research, except uh, many years ago, uh, Professor Bob Huggins was the one working on that. Uh, uh, I, I, I restarted this program at Stanford, and but building up the critical mass takes time. Um, and, and later, you know, Slack Stanford becomes an important partner of Battery 500 Consortium. Uh, led by PNNL National Lab. And uh, with critical mass, we build a uh, battery materials research program through Department of Energy through Slack. Uh, uh, this building it up with critical mass 2019, uh, we were able to launch storage X initiative in, inside Preco Institute. So this whole process really prepare us now with uh, about 10 plus faculties a uh, 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 core faculty is working on battery research, ready to build a battery center. But it did take us a, a, a long time, 15 years to get here. And during this process, we see the GSA and pre core resources play a very important role. But can we shorten this building up to much shorter because we don't have that much time. The coming decade is so important to decarbonize, to generate the technology to help decarbonize the whole economy. And we need a mechanism to build up the program fast. Um, so at Preco Institute right here, we're brainstorming with our faculties and staff. 
This is a powerful mechanism we come up. And from Preco Institute research program to potential new major initiative. And how do we do that? We already have very powerful Preco C fund. And these in usually individual faculty level, one to two faculty, 100 to 200K, coming from our support, our alumni from gifts and endowment. And starting this year, uh, I'm, I just started this uh, pre-core pioneering project. This expand the number of faculty. It's a bigger C fund. This funding source is also our gift and endowment, the funding for two years. I hope to build a team fast to strategically address very important areas of the energy research. The first C we are going to give up will announce, I mentioned earlier, is on the energy and climate AI on the big data. A very exciting proposal, very exciting teams. These will put us onto the map of uh, using big data to plan for the multi-level of the energy systems. And the CERC is the St Strategic Energy Research Consortium. And this is our SEA members providing from the industry, providing the funding, having a team of faculty. This is more like a GSAP uh, type of uh, uh, supporting level, one to two million for three years. And this is uh, uh, also uh, the selection just finished. Well, uh, you are going to be able to see uh, what, what project uh, very soon. Um, and this will lead to major initiative, you know, having eight to 10 core faculty uh, with a few million dollars per year type of support with industry, maybe some give endowment coming in to support major initiative eventually leading to research center involving government agencies, uh, uh, the state government as well, and the federal and state government both, and having much bigger scale. So we want to build up this whole process fast and, and Preco will be able to help to uh, uh, bring up the uh, faculty to work on uh, uh, critical areas of energy research. This will hopefully lead to the scientific breakthrough in the technology very fast. So with that, I want to go, go to the summary. This unprecedented support of clean energy and sustainability from government and industry and our new school and the planning on climate and sustainability also bring to Preco Institute the growth opportunity and the relationship with Slack is uh, very, very exciting. And uh, the Preco Institute is very well positioned to explore all this opportunity. Uh, we have seen new exciting initiative coming, uh, more areas now under discussion. I will welcome our faculty and staff's uh, uh, feedback and also our industry partners, alumni feedback. Uh, I will be happy to discuss with you. I know my time is uh, running out. I'll stop right here. Maybe we, we can take some questions. Uh, thank you. Great, very great. Much. I'm uh, ready to go. Uh, that was a uh, breathtaking, uh, inspiring, and forward-looking vision you laid out there, in my opinion. So I really, uh, uh, I think everybody probably resonated, if I'm not mistaken, resonated with that. We did have a few questions. I, it, your your talk was so well structured. I think a lot of the questions that came up at the beginning, you wound up answering by the end. But just around the margins, I guess one question. Uh, that came out early and may or may not still be uh, on the questioner's mind is, um, and this I think is for the world, but also for your initiative, is that should we think about uh, beyond electricity? Meaning, I think uh, explicitly for this questioner, and you're an expert on pieces of this as well, uh, other uh, kind of uh, sets of infrastructure, transportation, like hydrogen infrastructure or ammonia infrastructure, and whatnot, recognizing that a good way to store energy uh, in some scenarios might be through hydrogen and whatnot. So how are you thinking about that now? And do you, is that within or outside? And if inside, in what uh, parts of your program would those kinds of things come in? Yeah. These are all inside. This is a great question. All inside a pre-course consideration. So, um, you know, not just electricity. Electricity, of course, important part of that, the grid, and the electrical transportation, important part of that. But we also open to, for example, hydrogen could 
help transportation in the same time, maybe still refining industry. If our faculties want to work on hydrogen and steel and the steel refining process, right? I mean, I will be very supportive of that. I'm sure this is uh, many faculty, once they look into this question deeper, they will appreciate that. And I also see in, 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 the, uh, in the chat, somebody asking about agriculture, uh, a technology. I was agriculture, right? Roughly about getting close to 10% of uh, greenhouse gas coming from agriculture. That's very exciting also. Uh, uh, if our faculty have great ideas to decarbonize the agricultures, I think why not? I, I think critical institutes should be supportive of that. And then there's a cement right, uh, industry and cement is very hard to decarbonize if our faculty you know, look into the new idea, the new green cement, how do you generate new type of cement uh, for examples? I think Prico will be supportive of that as well. And, and it's very open at this moment we are, we are really waiting for faculty to, to come to propose to us and say they have an idea to help decarbonize uh, with a kind of gigaton scale of a CO2 possibility per year that we are, we are very excited about helping faculty to launch a research program. Terrific, another similar question, which I think is embodied in many of the initiatives, but I think it would be good to respond to a question about what role uh, in your vision does energy efficiency, meaning reducing energy demand, either at the device or systems level have in your uh, view of how things uh, should evolve at the Precord Institute? Well, energy efficiency is a very important part. Uh, I didn't put in, uh, in the slide emphasis. I'm waiting for faculty to start up coming to me. And I've been talking to Jim Sweeney, talking to uh, uh, certainly uh, uh, Emery Lawin, um, you know, working on energy efficiency. Mm -hmm. So certainly very important, low hanging fruit. If you do it right, you can save a lot of energy that reduce the CO2, already saving a lot of CO2. We are open to that for sure, for sure, yeah. Another question, you made a, a point uh, towards the end on uh, collaboration with states, particularly the one that we happen to live in now. Uh, has there been any similar uh, thinking about collaborating with cities, either the local ones that were very sustainability oriented or the big, big ones, many of which are in California from uh, Oakland, San Jose, San Francisco, Los Angeles and uh, whatnot? Yes, I, I think so. So we like to work with city as well under the context of course looking to energy system as well as a very exciting one is uh, we need to address is environmental justice, social justice. I think we, we, with, working with a local community, with cities, absolutely we are open to that. Indeed, you are going to see our uh, uh, pre-call pioneering project, the uh, first two coming out, uh, having environmental justice component in there. I think this program will start to look into engaging community. Yeah. yeah, that's where the action is in that space for sure, for sure. Uh, another uh, it, it, uh, interesting question is, it's kind of a competitive collaboration thing. In your review of what to do in pre-court and all your pre previous engagements, what are the, do you see any other universities who are trying to plan something at this scale in the energy and sustainability area? And if you do, are you trying to, already, try, I know you well, uh, trying to collaborate with them already in various ways? How do you think about cooperation and uh, competition amongst major universities? This is partly for the students, I think, as well. Yeah, I, I certainly, it's, it's, it's always true between university, this competition, as well as collaboration. Collaboration is very important for the fact, right, John, I'm speaking mm -hmm. right here about the pre core plan with a video recorded, this will be open to the public. I, it's already live stream, man, so you're out there. <laughs> yes, so it's already out there. So it's already uh, as uh, my gesture to uh, go out to ask for collaboration with other university. I, I absolutely think so. It's very important that we need to uh, collaborate on solving this uh, such a big problem, you know. And the individual university cannot just work along to do this. So my last question is my usual one that leads into your uh, uh, up close personal meeting with some of the registered students in the class and is what advice would you offer students in all these different areas about what the opportunities are in this space at Stanford and beyond? Yeah, 
So um, this is what I told actually my uh, group, my graduate students, uh, and, uh, you know, in my lab working with me uh, on PhD thesis. I told them, I said, this, this year is 2021. 2050 um, is a net zero time. Um, so this 30 years, very important. If you look at your, your age right now, right, your, your age, the next 30 years is golden time to work on sustainability, fighting climate change. Whether you are doing science or engineering, or you are doing business or law, it's all very exciting for you to work in this area because there's so many problems. It is multifaceted problem. It's, it's not just the science problem. It's not just the engineering problem. It's just not the not just the policy problem, it's not just the economic problem. They're all coupling in. So this is the most exciting time and go deeper, learn broader and, uh, and utilizing Stanford as a platform. We have such a comprehensive program right here. Get engaged with the whole community. Our faculties and staff are really happy, excited about working with all the students. Good. Well, with that, uh, I'd like to thank you very much. I, I uh, see uh, a lot of synergies actually uh, to be explored that uh, maybe you already are, I think you are, uh, with the Biden administration. I get from him the desire at least to go bigger or go home. And I think you brought that same um, energy to Stanford. And uh, we are uh, not the US government, but uh, uh, we have our own uh, ecosystem. And I'm very glad you're helping to um, mold it in this uh, in this way uh, moving forward. So thanks once again, and uh, we'll, we're now on to the next part of the program. Thank you so much for sharing your vision with us, even with uh, competing universities and companies and countries, I, I might add, but uh, I do think uh, you're a master at uh, managing those uh, relationships in a way that's good for everybody involved. So thanks again. Yeah, thank you, John. Great. Thank you, everybody.